On today's episode of The Unwritten Rule, we have another men's basketball loss to recap. Last home game for the Tigers. They lost to Auburn. We'll talk about that. Preview the final game of the season. One last chance for Mizzou to maybe sneak a win uh, in SEC play before the tournament starts. Uh, we also have a little update on the AD search. There was a, a tweet from Gabe that we'll talk about that relates kind of to Dennis Gates that I think was just important to touch on. So we'll talk about that. And then we have a couple of football recruiting notes, just a couple of visitors we're going to give our quick takes on that'll be in Columbia or already were in Columbia. Uh, and we'll recap them and, and do a little preview as well. Uh, and then we have quick hits jerseys of the week. Uh, Shawnee's made birds, the best things we learned. It's a fun show to dive into once again, apart from men's basketball before we get started. Of course, on the unwritten rule, it is presented by Bet Online, which continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With all the up to minute odds, stats, trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or mobile devices. Said to Bet Online today to become part of the team and remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. It's almost March Madness. We've had some chaos already in these conference tournaments. So we'll have, I'm sure, on for Monday's show when we do our, our mid-major Mondays, we'll have some fun uh conference tournament lines. But we have more, I have more on that in quick hits with how crazy March Madness has been already. So anyway, bet online, the game starts there. Head to them for all the best basketball wagering odds. And with that, without further ado, let's get started. The unwritten rule starts right now. I just I Marcel. Where are you going with that disc? You are not putting that on again. Marcel, okay, if you press that button, you are in very, very big trouble. Attention, everybody stop what you're doing. It's time for The Unwritten Rule, a Mizzou sports podcast brought to you by the Believe Network, alongside Peyton Haverman and Kenny Van Doren. Here is your host, Jack Knowlton. Welcome back to the Unwritten Rule. Today is Friday, March 8th, and uh, we have a quick update before we start or before we dissect men's basketball, which I don't think will take very long. Uh, I thought this was interesting to touch on to kind of lead the show because, of course, Mizzou is still in the midst of an AD search. We haven't heard too much publicly coming out about where that's at other than uh, an interesting tweet from Gabe um, that I, I thought was just interesting to touch on. Gabe tweeted uh, on Wednesday, per Mizzou spokesperson, quote, turnkey slash ZRG, which I assume is a, like, I guess, hiring search firm. firm or search firm, uh, has confirmed that Jocelyn Gates would not be involved in any part of the Mizzou athletic director search. Jocelyn is the wife of Dennis Gates and currently works for turnkey ZRG, which is assisting MU in replacing Desiree Reed Francois. Um yeah, I'm calling nepotism. This is ridiculous. I'm just kidding. But I, I think it's interesting. We got the name, at least, of the firm. And we now know, you know, they're getting some outside help. Um, of course, it was outside help that led to, I believe, the committee getting formed that has, you know, been associated with having Desiree, you're, you're you know, causing one of being one of the causes for Desiree to leave Mizzou. Uh, but just interesting. I don't know if y'all have a take on this. I I, I trust that um, Dennis Cates, wife, isn't going to be that, that felt when I read this, I was like, this is one of those crazy sports stories, you know, in the making. That's like Dennis Gates, wife turned some, turned some screws or like did something to have him stay when a new AD comes in. But obviously I don't think that's going to happen here. Uh, but any thoughts just on the AD search in general, I know we haven't touched on it a bit just cause not much has come out apart from this. Um, yeah, no, we don't even really have like solid candidate information out there. I mean, I'm glad Dennis Gates' wife isn't really involved with this just because I wouldn't want any coach's family member to be on the in a search firm that's like trying to replace this big a job. Um, ultimately, I also don't think it'll matter too much. I mean, Dennis Gates knows he's going to have to win next year and win a lot, like probably more than he would have had to win uh without DRF or with DRF in the fold. Um, we'll see where it goes. Um, I hope they just get it done rather relatively quickly. I mean, women's basketball, their season's over. I mean, a decision needs to be made there like pronto um, because I think it's a pretty obvious one. So we don't really want to, we don't want to get behind the eight ball on candidates there. Um, 
And I don't know. I, I don't think anything else is really contingent on the AD right now, like urgently, but just for women's basketball alone, I mean, you probably want to get something done quick. Yeah, I think it's really cool, though, that Jocelyn Gates is the VP of college and coaching practice at that firm, just knowing that like, she has a prominent role in college athletics and just uh, sports in general. Here's the full list. It comes from Michael Howey. Uh, of the Columbia Missourian, Bob Blip, uh, Blitz, Robin Winokur, Todd Graves, Jeff Lehman, Pam Bruzina, Ryan Rapp, Mike uh, Campeter, Richard Miller, Don Walsworth, Mike Mengini, Mike <laughs> Mengini, uh, pronunciation Tim guide. McIntosh. Yeah, yeah, there needs to be a pronunciation guide for some of these names. But yeah, um, but that's the the full list of the committee. Um, that Michael Howey posted a couple days ago. Um, I, I don't really know if that helps with anything, but I know Robin Winokur was someone who caught a lot of flack for the DRF uh, news. And this isn't this isn't the the firm, but oh, yeah. it is it is part of the, the search committee through Mizzou. Right? I think I think Winokur and Jeff Lehman, if I'm not mistaken, are on the board of curators. I'd have to go through and look at that list again. But I mean, Winokur you'd expect. The- yeah, go ahead. She's a, a chair on the UN Board of Curators. Okay. Is and... Layman as well? Or yes, he is a curator. Okay. Okay. That's what I thought. So you'd expect them to be involved, though. I mean, that's not talking. But that was the Twitter. Like everyone was tweeting at Robin Whitaker's account and was very upset that, like, I don't know, they attributed the root cause like toward her a little bit, uh, for Desiree. But yeah, interesting. No, I think that's important to know, Kenny, for for some of the you know, the players who will be involved in this next search. Peyton, I'm glad you brought up uh, women's basketball too, because of course the Tigers season ended. Uh, They were 14th in the SEC. They lost in the first round to Florida. Did make a, I did watch some of that game. They did make a pretty valiant comeback. They were down by like 20. I think they only lost by about six, but we're all, I assume us three, we're all Robin out on this, on this show at this point. Yeah, no, Robin pitched in. I think she even knows. I mean, if, if, um, if Desiree was still here, I mean, she probably would have been fired yesterday. But, I mean, I still don't think there's any way she's back unless something really, like, the AD search really drags out. And by then, it's just too late to get rid of her. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. Um, if you did, if you didn't know, I covered the women's basketball beat last year. Um, and there were rumors of Robin going then. The two, I had to pre-write a candidate list um the two um candidates i would still look out for and they were ones i wrote about last year are lindy laroque from unlv although that makes a little less sense now because desiree is gone but she still is like maybe the hottest mid-major coach um on on the market you would think uh what she's done at unlv is unbelievable and Grand Canyon's head coach, I believe her name is Molly Miller. I'll double check that. But she has also done a very good job. She has ties to Mizzou. Those two were the the main two I wrote about. Her name is not Molly Miller, so I'm wrong about that. But um, those were the main two I wrote about last year. I would expect those two to probably um, be the main candidates this time around, assuming Pinchkin is fired. Oh, no, her name is Molly Miller. I was right. Okay, thanks. Google for Good not job, pulling Peyton. up Molly Miller when I Googled her name. So keep an eye on those two is uh, what my thought. Maybe you want to go after a head coach, but there is a guy in the SEC right now who's an assistant on the LSU staff that I think has a great pull in the recruiting world and is also a pretty good um uh, I mean, coach in general, and that's Gary Reedus II, who's on the staff at LSU. And of course, the LSU team is one of the most prominent ones in college basketball. Fun fact, if you know the name Gary Reedus, he played 13 seasons in Major League Baseball before becoming a women's basketball assistant coach at LSU oh, wow. and becoming a, a college basketball coach in general. Um, he has a huge, like he's just big in the recruiting game. Uh, you probably do want someone who has experience as a head coach first. But if you are looking at some of the top assistants around the league, and especially the SEC, someone who has this poll, I think Gary Reedus is a name that you, you might consider. But I do like the idea of you know, just going after someone that's tenured and has experience winning as a head coach. Yeah. Yeah. I think you both make good points. I think uh, I'm in agreement from 
uh, a Robin Pinchton perspective that there needs to be some sort of change. It, it's pretty remarkable the amount of talent she brought in to that program and then just kind of did nothing with. Like, you know, before uh, or a while back, of course, it was Sophie Cunningham, you know, one of the greatest basketball players in Mizzou history. And they went, I don't even think they made a tournament, maybe one tournament. They made her two. There. Was it two? Okay. So I think they were the only but... years that Pinchin actually won a tournament game was with Cunningham. Right. And still, and still didn't really, you know, do anything that remarkable. I mean, making the tournaments good, but then, you know, you get like Haley Frank in, in the, in the five seasons she spent, she was really talented and did, you know, that team kind of did nothing with, with her time there. She's been all right recruiting, but it just has the winning hasn't, hasn't really followed suit. So I agree some time for a change uh, on the women's basketball front, but we'll see what happens with that timeline and the AD. I believe she actually made the tournament. Was it one tournament? All... No, no, there were, there was a four year stretch, but I don't remember the exact years Cunningham was there. Um, and three, they, Three of those years from 2015, the 2015 2016 season to the 2018 2019 season, Mizzou made the tournament all four years. And in three of those, the exception being 17 18, they made the second round of the tournament, but they didn't go in. They never even made it Sweet 16 with. Uh, right. Didn't go to the second weekend with like one of the better players in school history. So. And I mean, it wasn't, I mean, there's just been, that's kind of what the issue was when I was covering the beat last year. I mean, there is a bit. There's a ton of highly, like very talented recruits coming in. They just don't really develop. Um, mm-hmm. Jayla Kelly, she was a big time recruit. I mean, she just never really got like her footing as like a true big in the SEC. There were moments where she flashed, but nothing like that. I mean, Ashton Judd looked good, but I mean, it's not like a job saving player. Grace Slaughter came in and looked good this year, but overall, I mean just not enough wins, frankly. I mean, they were last in the SEC this year, and the development of a lot of these elite players never really was up to stuff. Sophie was uh, on the team, uh, first year was 2015, 2016, and then the next four seasons last year was 2018, 2019. I do have the the... The, fi- the, fi- the finishes up as well if you want me to just read them off i didn't i also didn't realize she's she was here when the, it's been a while. the big 12 yeah and yeah. they finished 10th back-to-back years before they moved to the sec uh first round uh exit in the nit in 2012 13 and 2013-14 uh next year after that third round and then nca tournament four straight years second round second round first round second round in 2019 2020 of course there was no tournament uh 2020 2020 and 2021 and 2021 and 2022 first round of the nit and that's and they would not have made the tournament in that uh yeah that's the the, that was the big controversy yeah because they Um, they, um i think they had the case where they got the camera on selection sunday and then they didn't make the tournament so we had the sad like that was was, a different year this was this was they were nine and twenty-two this year. That was, I think, a different year you're thinking of. I think that they, they might, had one year where they didn't. That was yet. the last year um Asia Blackwell was with the team. Mm-hmm. I think that was 21-22. They had a horrible collapse, did not yep. make the tournament. Then they lost to Drake in the opening round of the WNIT when they set up that section of the bracket for Mizzou to make a huge run. It was just it was bad. It was the last few years, I mean, really kind of came on blue like they beat south carolina on that um mm-hmm. lauren hansen but buzzer beater and it's been all downhill since for them yeah that was i remember i remember watching that game yeah that's the season i was thinking of when they got like they they kind of framed it that they got robbed even though it was yeah it was kind of a collapse but i remember running around it was a bummer because that south carolina game was during winter break for students so there wasn't that many people in the building but they won. And I remember watching it at home and I was running around my house. Cause I think South Carolina has lost. I think they're like 73 and one or something in sec play in the last like, couple seasons. And they, that one loss was to Mizzou and Columbia. So you always have that. Yeah. You always there was that. a time where during Sophie Cunningham's uh, tenure at Mizzou, there was kind of a budding rivalry between Mizzou and South Carolina because they both looked like programs that were like mm-hmm. on the rise. There was that whole, Sophie Cunningham getting into a fight with people in Columbia, South Carolina. Jim Sterk was saying 
that there were slurs hurled at players, but then they, that was refuted. It was, it could have been something very nice, but I mean, Mizzou just couldn't keep up the momentum. And now Robin Finchton is looking like he's out. And Don Staley is probably the best coach in women's basketball. There you go. Narratives. Uh, yeah, she was not well liked because of all that stuff. Don Staley. That was that was a fun that was a funny saga. Um, but we'll we'll see what happens with that with the new AD and then uh, how they approach women's basketball. Let's talk about the other basketball team that's going to be the 14 seed in the SEC tournament, the Mizzou men, who um, are one game away from completing a winless streak in SEC play. They lost 101 to 74 to uh, 274. Wait, sorry. 101 to 74 against Auburn uh, on senior night. My head just went there. And uh, yeah, not a nice send off for the Mizzou seniors. Um, I'll rattle through the highlights I took away from this game. My first one was when they showed the fans and there were two people with paper bags over their heads. Uh, one of them just said, oh, and 18. And the other had a sad face on it. Very Cleveland Browns esque uh, from the Mizzou fans there. And then I saw on Twitter, which I'm going to give a shout out. I'm pulling the tweet up because this was funny. I think it was Uncle Danny on Twitter. Yeah. Shout out Uncle Danny on Twitter. He tweets some funny Mizzou stuff. Uh, Tweeted a clip of Jesus Carolero who got called for a five second violation without dribbling, which um, is, as Uncle Danny says, is pretty remarkable uh, to to see. He also traveled a few times. Like there was just like picking up that that pivot foot. Oh, yeah. His pivot foot is moving like crazy. You're right. yeah, uh, just just bad. Those were my two. Those were my two big highlights from this game. Yeah, I mean, what's left to say? Uh, I never imagined we'd ever be in this situation ever, uh, especially after last season. I mean, even in the worst of the Conzo days, I was like, well, they can pick up a fun win or two. This team did not even give us that in conference play. Um, yeah, the Jesus Carolera, it's stop playing him. Like, that's seriously, what are you doing playing, giving Jesus Carolero does not deserve one minute of playing time. He is the worst player on the team. He has done nothing since the first half of the Arkansas Pine Bluff game. It makes absolutely no sense what, why he ever gets a minute on the court, ever. It's embarrassing. I mean, his own teammate, Nick Honor, came up to him and yelled him, pass the ball after that five second thing like and jesus carolero was saying oh well no one was open you can't stand there for five seconds jesus carolero throw the ball into the stands for all i care rather than sit than getting a five second like no dribble i've never seen that call at any level and i knew it was a rule but i've never seen that that it, it, it defies all logic it makes no sense uh, it's just embarrassing to watch at this point. Another 20 point performance for Sean East and uh, really nothing to show for it. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, there, there, there's uh, maybe your one, uh, your one ray of light. Um, Jackson Francois played in this game. He did. I don't know if you, if you guys noticed, but he just got bulldozed. <laughs> Uh, and he was trying to go for a rebound or at least try to box out who, whatever Auburn player was still on the floor for some reason. Um, at the end of the game, the Auburn player was talking with the ref while the, the the clock was still ticking away, just talking about some ruling or some call. and wasn't even playing, and Jackson Francois was just standing there. So there's just a lot of that, and I don't know at this point. It's just teams come in here, and they, they know it's a win. Uh, kept it close uh, at halftime. I will say that. Got the hopes up five point um but going into this lsu game uh i i really have no indication that mizzou will even keep this game under 10 points it's it's on the road you're in baton rouge maybe not the best the pmat is probably not the best uh place in college basketball for men's but lsu is definitely having a better season and matt mcmahon has those guys in a mindset that they just don't quit and if they're gonna play mizzou there's just there's they're not going to get in a spot where they're going to be down like they were against Kentucky and coming back. Uh, yeah, I forgot about the Jackson minutes. He almost made a half court shot at the end too. I yelled, I yelled when I hit the rim. I went, Oh, thought of Ben Sternberg. It fixed the That's, game mattered. Everybody that might be his last it. time. It could be his last time in a Mizzou uniform before Probably he goes. Yeah. To I mean, he's, he's going to Arizona. Yeah. 
He's got to take the mantle from Caleb Love at Arizona. Former, 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 future, future Missouri Tiger Caleb Love. Um, yeah, it was just, it was bad. It was, it was pretty embarrassing. Um, this was one thing I wanted to bring up because I feel like, you know, we watched these games on TV, uh, haven't been able to get to a Mizzou game this year, have had no desire, quite frankly. Um, if they were better, maybe I w- would have made more of an effort. But we watch these games on TV, and I think we see some photos on Twitter and stuff, and we, like, assume, you know, our stadium's empty. It's just like the the worst of the Conzo days when no one was going to games. Apparently, people are still going to games. Uh, I, I encourage everyone to go read Gabe's article, and shout out to you if you contributed to it. He interviewed a bunch of fans and talked about it and has been, like, very vocal about um, how people are still showing up. I think they've had, like, over 10,000 come to – I think it was like 12 of the last 17 games or something was the stat he put. But I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that. I guess they're still, you know, putting butts butts in seats when the boots are on the ground. Obviously, it doesn't really resonate when you're watching the game on TV as much. I think it helps their 0-17 in that regard because people just want to come watch the horror show. I mean, like, I would still be going to these games just to see what stupid garbage they do next. I mean, there is like that just morbid curiosity aspect of it. Um, And I know that's probably not the main reason people are still going to these games. I loved going to the games when they were terrible too, just because it's just fun. Um, But I props to them, I guess. Hopefully they get a product more worth watching. Something that, uh, you know, came to my mind is before the season started. And I guess throughout the season, we did mention that this isn't the strongest sec league that we've seen in the last couple of years it doesn't have the the top talent that it might have had before a lot of these teams and I thought about maybe too he's like Mizzou fans want to see who they're playing as well you look at that Auburn game a couple years ago that student section was packed because it was the number one team in the nation um, there still are some good SEC teams in the country that came through Mizzou this year or faced the Tigers at some point as well in Kentucky Alabama and of course Auburn um, recently and then Tennessee as well Tennessee actually locked it won the uh, the regular season uh, championship or regular season title for the SEC this pat or I guess yesterday now uh, I don't know if you guys saw it Dalton Connect did the ring and it mm-hmm. kind of got it stirred some feathers so some people seemed a little bit upset that he was celebrating that um, I actually I kind of want to have a have conversation that. about that yeah, if you guys want to just segue yes yeah, so that, that's something I want to talk about I think winning the regular season is more impressive than winning the tournament just because of, you know, you're playing what 18 games against probably right now, maybe the second best league in college basketball and you pull off the best record. I think that's pretty impressive. Tournaments can be a crapshoot all the time. And we know that it's college basketball. That's just how it works. I don't see any, any reason to get frustrated with what he did. I agree. I agree with that take. Um, I, I don't mind it. I think, especially with where Tennessee is going to be, they're going to get a double buy. They only have to win, I guess, three games to, to win the, and there are going to be against good teams, but I kind of agree. The SEC is a gauntlet and it's like, I mean, every conference is, you know, at the power six level. So I, I don't blame him. I'm, I'm sure opposing fans were probably pissed off. I mean, Dalton connect has lit up ev- everybody he's played this season. So I'm sure that's probably gotten under people's skin at this point in the year, but I agree with your take, Kenny. I, I don't mind the, the ring celebration. Yeah, I don't either. Um, I will say I would hang a banner for winning the SEC tournament and or regular season. I think both are impressive in their own ways. Um, Tennessee is a team that genuinely could do both. And I think that is, I don't know how many times that's really happened. I know Kentucky did it once. Um, but that's that winning the regular season and tournament is very, very, very impressive, I think. Because I think that just solidifies that, like even like Kenny said, tournaments can be a crapshoot, but you were good enough to overcome kind of the chaos. Uh, I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah, weird stuff happens. Oh, I Alabama also... did it literally last year, didn't they? The, oh yeah, they, yeah, they did. They won both, but I, I also, I'll put, I'll put my neck out there too. I think, I think this Tennessee team's going to the Final Four. I like, I and I, the only I thing that makes me hesitate on that is. Rick Barnes being their coach and Rick Barnes being like a perennial choker in the tournament. Um, but I, I, they're so good. And it makes you so much more frustrated as Mizzou fan with how well Mizzou handled that game in Columbia for most of it and limited dog connect. Like it speaks to what maybe Mizzou could have done if some, some other things clicked or went right. I don't know, but 
yeah, I think this Tennessee team's fantastic. I think I think they're going to go to the Final Four. They're so balanced. Dalton Connect is a lottery pick. The guy just takes over games. Like, I don't know. They're they're if you're looking for an SEC team, if you're one of those people who like, I don't know if you guys do this, but I like to root for other SEC teams, like a conference rah rah. I know that's like kind of gets God, no ew ew. No, you I don't like that. Hate, I the, hate conference loyalty, hate especially that. at the basketball hate. level. Yeah, it's I different. I can maybe I, I like it in uh, I'll say I like it in bowl games, it's not with like teams like Arkansas, but like uh, other schools, like if Alabama is in a bowl game or Georgia, I mean, even Florida, maybe, you know, I, I want the SEC to win all those bowl games if right. Mizzou's not playing them because Mizzou's not going to play That's them in those bowl games. Also, like people are so lame about about it in bowl season, because whenever an SEC team loses, you see it all over Twitter. Oh, it just means more. Right. So there is a part of me that's like, I just kind of hope the SEC wins because it's not a debate that the S. Okay, Kenny's got the SEC hat on. Hey, put the SEC it's hat on. Literally, it's not it's a debate at all that the SEC is the best football conference, uh, like by a pretty hefty margin. Um, I know the Big Ten just won their first uh, national title since like what 2014 when Ohio State won it, but mm-hmm. I think overall it's. So part of me does agree with that take. Like, I do kind of want the SEC teams to just win the bowl games. But I, I, the, my hatred of SEC teams is just like a different level in basketball. I can't, I root for their failure, like, like very actively. Like, I want them all to lose in the round of 64. Okay, valid, valid. I Maybe I'm just more, I guess I'm more, because uh, I agree with you totally in football. Like, I've been raised to do that with other like big 10 teams and do that with the sec now, but ba- I guess basketball, I just still do it a little bit too, but definitely not with Arkansas. That, that is one thing. Um, or Texas A&M, if you know, you know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't think there's another conference that has conference loyalty, probably like the sec, just cause there is mm-hmm. the sec chance. Uh, I, the big 10 is so different now too. There there's teams out West. Yeah. I, I don't think people in Indiana would be rooting for UCLA if there was, some I did it with the old Big Ten when on. I was, yeah. I like that, when but I, was, I think the SEC is the one that's going to stick to it. But I, I do think it's going to be weird now with Texas and Oklahoma. I think there might be some conflict for schools like A&M Ooh, and yeah. some other schools around that region that just like not not doing this anymore. I, I would stuff. not be rooting for a and or Oklahoma and Texas, really. I think that would be kind of hard. Yeah. Yeah, that will be interesting. And obviously, like, it doesn't – it's not uniform, right? Like – you know, I guess I would guess like Alabama fans don't root for like Auburn in bowl games or like or in the tournament. And yeah. Texas isn't going to root for Oklahoma in the tournament. So it's like it's not like totally uniform, but I don't know. I mean, Penny so, mentioned we yeah. like we won't root for Arkansas in yeah. any of these things. But like, why would I care if Mississippi State loses a bowl game? Like, I why would I care if Ole Miss like if if Ole Miss beats like, like, why would I root against Ole Miss against Penn State? Like, why, mm-hmm. why would I care if Georgia doesn't win the national championship unless Mizzou is in it? Right, right. In summary, I think Texas. I think Tennessee, not Texas. I think Tennessee is going to the Final Four. Uh, they're very good, and obviously right. anything can happen in the tournament. But I think they're going to win in Nashville. I think they're going to win, or they're going to go deep in the actual bracket. But Mizzou plays LSU. To finish up conference play at 7 30 saturday night in baton rouge the tigers of lsu have won uh two of their last three games they did just lose to arkansas they are 16 and 14 8 and 9 in conference play they're not very good but they're better than mizzou so they will probably win that game um let's segue now and uh we'll talk a little football some quick uh some quick hits of that before we get into quick hits that was a bad choice of words um <laughs> We got some recruiting stuff. This is just, you know, we're kind of in recruiting season. And there's a couple names on here. I'll just run through them, and you guys can talk about whoever you want. Three visitors I saw that are either upcoming or already happened uh, in the spring. We're obviously in spring practice now. We're seeing all the footage. I like the people also who are overanalyzing the receiver one-on-one routes and being like, so-and-so burned this safety. They don't look very good. Um, We're in spring, but I respect it. Anyway. Um, you outing Peyton? I'm gonna I'm gonna butt in here. Yo, you outing I am Peyton? outing Peyton. Yeah, yeah. Well, Travez Johnson wasn't very good last year either. So that's true. Doesn't look improved in 
two clips from one spring practice in March, but fair enough. A um, couple of guys who will be on campus this weekend, uh, Dylan Alfred and Jack Lange. Uh, Alfred is a wide receiver. Lange is a offensive lineman. Um, Corey Sims, who is the number one player in Missouri. He's a receiver. He goes to Christian brothers, uh, college high school in St. Louis. Uh, he was on campus Wednesday, said he liked it there. And then Lamont Rogers, a offensive tackle is taking an OV in late May. Any of those names, uh, guys on your radar or something, you know, Mizzou fans should keep an eye on. Lang is a very important one. Um, he, him, it. He seems like he's also very interested in Notre Dame. That's just kind of what the buzz is right now. But Missouri's been, been in constant contact with them, it seems like. Um, and getting him back on, on campus early and often is never a bad thing. So I'm sure they'll be right in the thick of it until the end. That's that's the main one I would look at here. Lamont Rogers is a little interesting. Um, he's six foot eight, 305 pounds. He's already locked Good in that Lord. official visit. Uh, for May 31st, and that that seems like the big official weekend for the for the Tigers. Um, I believe there's a, another linebacker from the state of Georgia who's also locked in one there, uh, who was a big Blake Baker target, but still has has that um, connection to the Tigers, even with Blake Baker now at LSU. The the thing about Lamont though is he keeps his recruitment pretty close to himself. He he's not he's not very talkative. He doesn't really answer messages. Um, he kind of just goes his own way, but Sean Williams, colleague of Jack and I's at Rivals, he's got a lot about it, and it's, it's on Power Mizzou right now if you want to learn more about LaPont. He's, he's a good basketball player, too, and he's pretty nimble at, at 6'8", 305. A lot, a lot to be excited about to having him on campus, especially for an official visit um, coming from Texas. And we talked about it, you know, getting that reach into Texas is kind of looks like that next thing. And if you're going to get some of these top offensive linemen in the class of 2025, Lamont Rogers is one of the ones you want to keep your eye on. Definitely. Uh, the only other one I'll touch on is Sims, uh, Corey Sims, the receiver who was on campus Wednesday. He's in the middle of taking a bunch of spring visits. This one feels pretty important too. He's the number one player in the state. He's a wide receiver out of St. Louis. We've gone through this rodeo before and seen how that's paid off. Uh, he, yeah, he was on campus. He said he kind of felt like a priority with the staff. I think he's visited like four or five times already. So it seems like they are in very early on with with uh, with him. I do know he'll be at uh, Alabama this weekend um, taking an unofficial. So I, he's, he's a name to keep an eye on. I mean, he's the number one player in the state for a reason. Interesting uh, fact about him that I learned is that Blake Baker was kind of big in his recruitment. Blake Baker went to the, I mean, he was in a safety, but Blake Baker still talked to him quite a bit when he was kind of recruiting that area in St. Louis. Uh, maybe just something there because Baker ended up offering him when he went to LSU, but it doesn't look like LSU is pulling him, pulling any interest away from Mizzou. That one linebacker I wanted to mention is Luke Metz, who is now a four star, wasn't even ranked. Uh, by rivals like two weeks ago and when the 2025 updates came out Luke Metz name went in there as a four star and he has Mizzou among his, his top interests um, and that that's somebody that you need to monitor moving forward as well for DJ Smith yeah some names to keep an eye on recruiting season's gonna heat up obviously with the way the Tigers are winning there's expecting to be some heavy in and out of state hitters uh, coming to Columbia for Right now we're in like unofficial visit season. And then like Kenny said, with that late May into the summer, that's when you'll see a lot of OVs. You'll see all the fun pictures of them wearing the merch. Uh, oh, although wait, aren't those like not allowed anymore? Didn't, uh, didn't, didn't something pass? That's totally like, that totally just came to my mind, but I don't know. I don't know if you guys know, didn't something just pass where they're like not allowed to do that anymore? They can't do them unless they're official, I believe. Oh, okay. Unless they're official. Okay. So they, you'll still see them, but just not with unofficial guys. Um, yeah, we'll see what, what happens with, uh, with recruiting men's basketball. I said, I'll still make a video if they beat LSU. I have I, wanted to make one for so long. I miss them for football, but that'll be back sooner, uh, before we know it, I guess. So we'll see with that. Let's finish the show. We'll segue to quick hits. <laughs> Okay, quick hits time. We've uh, we <laughs> we're figuring we've out more, and more uses. Yeah, we figured out more and more uses for our um, software. Shout out Streamyard. No free ads, but thank you to them. I guess we pay for them, so it's not really an ad. Uh, but we have we have newfangled 
technology for our quick hits. We have more visuals. So everyone go subscribe to the YouTube. That's all the more reason you should, uh, you should watch there. Anyway, Kenny, why is Courtney Crutchfield on your screen? Courtney Crutchfield, uh, the Mizzou wide receiver signee who will enroll this summer, is uh, finishing out his basketball career at Arkansas at Pine Bluff in Arkansas, and he had a monster, uh, pretty monster shot to, to finish this double OT game this past week. And I'm going to play it here. You're not going to be able to watch it. You just saw my screen there, but you're not going to be able to watch it um, <laughs> on wherever we'll you're that. listening to the podcast. You're going to have to go on YouTube and. Uh, I'll, I'll full screen it if you guys I'll commentate you on that? it for the pod. Yeah, yeah let me commentate it. for the podcast listeners. Inbound to Crutchfield. They need a shot here. Crutchfield, two dribbles, half court at the buzzer. He got it. Courtney Crutchfield for Central walks it off. The ref gets involved in the scrum. He's telling him to get the hell off the court. And Central wins it. My God, that man can fly. Mizzou is getting blessed next year. Uh, it's not Central, oh. but it is Pine Bluff. You're thinking My bad. A different school, but that's okay. Yeah, great, great shot by Courtney Crutchfield. Maybe he can help out the basketball team next season. I'm totally. I don't see Ryan Crutchfield. Wango doing that. <laughs> so ranked nice higher. One, right? Um. Um. Yeah, Peyton, sorry. All right, my jersey of the week is going to be Matt Day's NC State, a former NC State running back. He was on the roster back in 2016. He was a former second to last pick in the NFL draft. Matt Days, I picked him as my jersey because he was on the team when Elijah Drinkwitz took over as OC at NC State, moved to Raleigh, took over as uh-huh. OC at the Wolfpack. Reason Drinkwitz is uh indirectly my jersey of the week is because he um explained his decision uh or I guess the opportunity he had at Missouri um, and why he kind of chose Missouri over maybe some other places on the Like a Farmer podcast. Um, he, well, it's not that funny. Um, no, there no, you I'm see Kenny, at Kenny circling Kenny is pulling, it feels like, it feels like he's teaching a class. Yeah, Kenny is You could have just given your jersey of the week to him. I, I, I'm pretty sure Drinkwitz might have played. He played. I, I think he did, but I didn't, I didn't know for sure. It didn't say on his Wikipedia that you have so lovingly pulled up there. But Drinkwitz basically like explained like he saw an easier path to the SEC championship in the SEC East. I mean, probably didn't help or probably didn't hurt that they were going to pay him a lot of money uh, to upgrade there as well. Um, he also, I thought the most interesting thing because I think people have always kind of wondered how he just pulls off these monster recruiting classes. He kind of explained like Missouri is an, is kind of at an intersection like where you can kind of have like Midwest and Southeast kind of recruiting targets. He had, you're in between two um, major Metro hubs in St. Louis and Kansas city. Like he explained it very, very well. Um, it, I've always wondered just kind of how he's been able to recruit. He explained it well. He says, Missouri is kind of smart about their targets. They don't often go up against teams like LSU Alabama Ole Miss. There's exceptions to that, of course, like Ennis Rakestraw, they beat Alabama and Texas for Ennis Rakestraw. Kawan Lacey, they just beat out Ole Miss for him um, and Alabama for him. Uh, but it was just an interesting uh, uh, an, an interesting answer. Um, gave a little bit of insight on how he recruits so, like pretty much at a level we've never seen at Mizzou. So I would uh, go, go listen to the Like a Farmer podcast with him. Uh, also, I just love that Drinkwitz sports the Cotton Bowl gear. Literally, like, <laughs> chance he gets. Uh, he's kind of the sicko like me where the bowl the bowl wins mean that much. Yeah, Peyton, like, it, it isn't even a Mizzou Cotton Bowl sweatshirt. Like, it's just it just has the Cotton Bowl logo. <laughs> like, it's like he just went there as a fan. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's electric. Um, <laughs> all right. I don't know what could ever be like Drinkwitz play football. <laughs> this is way better. Yeah, I Who love this. It made way more interactive quick hits. Um, mm-hmm. I'll I'll start my jersey of the week intro while Kenny's doing that because it doesn't really have that funny of a visual. But um, my jersey of the week, I'm given to, of course, I'm sure a lot of people listening and watching are big uh, Kansas City Royals fans. If you're from uh, KC or just support them. And George Brett had a hilarious interview clip that I, I had to make. So I'm making him my jersey of the week. Um, he basically talked about how when they're tearing down 
the Royal Stadium and they want to build a new one. He wants a urinal from the stadium. He doesn't want a seat. He doesn't want, you know, I don't know, a piece of the crown or something. I don't know. He wants a urinal specifically. He went into detail. He was like, he's like, I got urinals in my house. He talked about how he wanted one from Yankee Stadium and he couldn't get one. And he, he literally goes, I will sneak the architect who helped design my house into the stadium and say, we got to take out one of these uh, if I don't get one. So I guess that's a call to the Royals. Give George Brett a urinal. He, he just wants a urinal. He's like, I grew up in locker rooms. I've got six urinals in my house. Needs and needs another one. And you know what? I respect it. And if I ever get the to the fortunate position to build my own house, I'm going to put a urinal in it. How do how are you? Would you guys put a urinal in your house? No, but um, <laughs> I do think that since George Brett is asking the Royals for one, that he will get one. He is treated like royalty in that town. I think he's second to literally only Mahomes in terms of just sports royalty in Kansas City. If I he's said this off air. Stadium urinal. He's Googling Boston Stadium bathroom. He did Google it. There um, you go. Here's a model of what he could get. Um, the website, urinal.net. <laughs> Don't click. Hey, Do not good. click that website. Um, Don't click that website. Nice. But no, I said this off there. If uh, Mahomes and Brett ran against each other for mayor of Kansas City, I think Mahomes would win, but not by much. Why are you going to have Charlie Manuel up on your tabs, <laughs> This might have been a bad idea. Uh, okay, let's move on to Main Bird. Oh, that's next. why. Okay. Sean, what's the next segment? God dang it, I keep oh, I like one. no captain. He's the main bird. This has gone off the rails. Gone off the rails. Photo of Sean each time I play that from here on in. We can have a visual of Sean while that's. No, playing. I like no captain. He's the main bird. Main bird, uh, what is yours, Kenny? Do you forgot uh, My Sean East Main Bird of the Week. Goes to Charlie Manuel. I was actually uh, I was at my 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 daily tr- or my weekly trivia last Thursday, and a man came up to me at the bar, and told me he used <laughs> to be a cab driver back in the day, and around 2007 I think was the date he gave me. He used to pick up uh, major league baseball players and managers and drive them to the stadium um, from the Galleria, a little bit further away from where the Astros play in downtown, and the Astros were playing the Phillies one week. And Charlie Manuel was somebody picked up, and Charlie Manuel had some choice words about Ryan Howard. And the, my connection for Charlie Manuel to a bird is that as a player, he played for the Swallows. Uh, it's right here, uh, the NPB. If, if you guys are looking, wait, click the logo. Tokyo Yako Swallows. I want to see the logo. That's the Buffaloes. But what did he uh, say okay. about Ryan Howard? Uh, his choice words about Ryan Howard is that he said he was like lazy and he wasn't a good player and kind of was getting Ooh. frustrated with him. Um, they ended up giving Ryan Howard a pretty big contract uh, from there as they went on to win the 2008 wow. World Series, as you see right here on Charlie Manuel's Wikipedia page. And Charlie Manuel is my main bird of the week. Probably should have been and my why... dirty bird, but I totally forgot about the story. <laughs> and why <laughs> did this cab driver come up to you and talk? Were you just wearing like a baseball shirt or something? Like you typically nope. do. Nope. He, he just, just he approached, approached you and was like, me. boy, I got a story for you. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. People just oh like, go back to that. Oh, my God. Is that Sean East at Bradley? I've never seen a photo of him at Bradley. Please pull up. Oh, I hope that pulls up. I'll move on while we wait for that. Uh, my main bird of the week is um, Matt Eberflus, the Chicago Bears head coach. Um, like a you million may be wondering, photos of him at Bradley. Oh, look at him! Look at it. his hair is so different. Wait, you 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 said you've never seen one? Never seen a photo of him at Bradley. There's a million on Google. Kenny was just no, on. I like there. no captain. He's the main. Yeah, bird. I know. I never seen one before. That's uh, crazy! Wow, look at that. Okay, um, moving looked. on. All right, whatever. No, why would I ever have looked up Shawnee's Bradley photo? Um, anyways, Matt Eberflus. The reason he his connection to the bird is that he got a glow up and now he looks fly like a bird. Um, that's not him. You need to find his glow up photo. Um, he was at a mark. He was at a market basketball is, game. Yep, there it is. There he is. He's got aura now. He was at no, a market. I think you, there was a photo of him game. at the game. Yeah, with with Matt Lafleur. Um, the reason he was there was that yeah, Matt Eberflus's daughter. Um, is considering colleges, and Marquette is one of the finalists, per se. And so they went to the basketball game because they were just on campus. Um, 
he said thank you to Shaka Smart. Good luck this season. Uh, so, and this is the obligatory. Kenny and I were at the last game Shaka Smart coached at uh, Texas. Reminder. Um, yeah. So Matt Everflus, that's my that's that's my uh, main bird because he he looks fly now like a bird. How do you feel about that as a Bears fan that he's with the mortal enemy? I don't care. I just want to win football games. I just, it's a dead rivalry. Let's just win football games. Fair. All right. Um, my main bird of the week goes to the entire Atlantic Sun Conference. Um, and there are a bird because the Ospreys play in there, and Osprey is a bird. Um, the Atlantic Sun was chaos to start March Madness. Hey, fun. Uh, yeah, a fun. Kenny Payton and I are, are all, all three of us are pretty big mid-major college basketball fans. Uh, we, we've been making our picks for all the conference championship games, including like the power six ones too. But yeah, the A-Sun, the one and the two seed lost in the first round of the tournament. Um, that was Eastern Kentucky and Lipscomb. They both lost. And there's just been, there's just been chaos. I think the Jacksonville Dolphins, who are like the 10 seed, uh, one and they're still they they could roll and make a Cinderella run, but they beat one March Madness them. is here. Yeah, March Madness is here. And uh, boys, if you have to pick one mid major team to make a Final Four, maybe Florida Atlantic, Loyola Chicago style run, which team would you pick? Like that, I expect to make it this year. No, just like it, if you could have a dream scenario, maybe maybe be a little realistic, but like a team from one of these conferences that no one knows about, you know, give like your pick where if like, if you're a guy at the bar and you want to impress everyone and knowledge, be like, this team's going to make a run this year. And it's like, I don't know, a mid-major. Um, I was pretty hot on Western Carolina, but they've kind of cooled. I'll, I'll, I'll stick in the uh, big South. Um, and I'll say hot high point. I'll say high okay. point. Um, and that's, that's different South. I think, but high point, I think they're going to get it done this year. Make it to their first March Madness. Um, it's it's a hop, skip, and a jump away from Burlington, North Carolina, where I used to live. Uh, so let's uh, let's go Panthers of high point. All right. High point. Kenny, do you have a team? I can't see myself on my screen right now, but can you guys see my shirt when I go like this? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, He's back wearing to back. Florida Atlanta go Owls. Hoot hoot, growls, <laughs> and I think FAU will go back to back. That is my my mid major. I do like right. FAU. Uh, my team is Peyton and I have talked off air extensively. Uh, is the Samford Bulldogs? I'm a very big Samford fan. Uh, they've electrified. They're like fourth in the country in scoring. So I don't know. I like I like them. They're um they're gonna go they're gonna go deep into the tournament. But yeah. That's my main bird. I'm getting lost in whatever Kenny's trying to. He's looking up the next. He's thing. He's looking up our next thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait a second. Best thing Kenny. you learned, Peyton. Best thing I learned this week is the quote that Kenny has on screen right now. Kenny, if you would keep that up for me. Um, <laughs> Drinkwitz explained on this same like a farmer. There's a lot of good nuggets on this like a farmer podcast. Um, Eli Drinkwitz. He explained. He went more in depth on the stand on business post game comment to Josh Reifel. He um, explained that he did it because it was basically a dare. Like, um, he, he said, I told the defense if they stood on business that I would tell the head coach at that after the game. And they did it. They were walking right behind me to make sure I did it. I had two choices. I could either look like a jackass nationally by saying it, or I could look like a jackass to my own team for not saying it. There's no choice there. Drinkwitz has said repeatedly, I think he also said on this podcast, like the only thing that matters, he does not care what the national perception of him is, which I think he's lying about a little bit, but um, he all, he said that the locker room was the most important thing. Like the only thing he cares about is how his locker room set him. He got a ton of brownie points for this. There was a clip, an extended clip. I think everyone has seen the clip of Drinkwitz shaking Heifel's hand and saying we st stand on business, Josh. But I saw, like, an extended version that someone replied with. He goes right to Darius Robinson afterwards, and it sounds like he says, I told his ass or something to that effect, <laughs> and Darius Robinson is, like, laughing his ass off at the same time. So I think Drinkwitz is telling the God-honest truth, like, about this. Like, yeah. I do think that was it, and I think he, that Darius Robinson was super happy he did it. I believe him. 
I believe him. Uh, I, 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 I want this. Me. Why? I, I got to say this. This tweet's bothering me. They, if you're Why? watching on the YouTube, they use two different types of quotation marks. And then they used, they didn't use the or, or like real quotation mark right here. It, it's just, this is a different type you, than this one. If you guys are looking. Yeah, you're never supposed <laughs> to, you're never supposed to use single quotes unless it's a quote inside of a quote. It's true. So, yeah. that's so this is a different type. Like it's like it's a different font. Is it? I can't really. I can't really tell is that. Cam from one year. Yeah, Cam Newton. I said on three. That wouldn't. Oh no, I do see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Wouldn't happen to rivals. Kenny, Kenny's that. a stickler for those things. If now, now that we have visuals, if you're going to be on our visual, Kenny will scrutinize any grammar errors or mistakes. Mm -hmm. We were raised right by the Pete Bland school of of AP style. It owned so. aggregator. Yeah. Thank you, Pete. On three? It's an aggregator. I mean, that's Thank what it's you, doing. Pete. This is aggregation. I guess this right is aggregating. Yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah. yeah. Aggregation, aggregation of yeah. agriculture. Farm, the farmer like podcast. Farmer. <laughs> Drinkwitz is... How do we get Drinkwitz on here? We need to talk to like a farmer, whoever whoever he got his agent. We need Drinkwitz to come on this show. Also, the only other note I had on this, I think the defensive player should keep escalating the dares for Eli Drinkwitz if he's going to keep doing it. I think he should say... They should say, like, Drinkwitz, next time you need to punch Josh Heupel in the face. Otherwise, we're not going to be happy to play for you. It won't be a next time right now. <laughs> yeah. That's the lucky oh, yeah, thing about true. this. I want you to punch I Caleb did. I would love to see these two have played this year. Like, I think it would have been electric. Because yeah. it was starting to kick up a little. I mean, Mizzou got absolutely whooped the previous two. They kind of handed some back to Tennessee. Would have been fun. But oh, well. It's a good rivalry. Kenny, what's the best thing you learned? Um, best thing I learned this week is that um, Tyron Hopper and Cody Schrader after the combine last week went back and, you know, uh, to Mizzou and went to some practices. Uh, it's it's kind of funny, though, looking at these photos. This comes from Adam Busek of the Columbia, Missouri. And if you're if you're looking on the YouTube, it's like that one guy that comes back. He's like, oh, you know, it's, it's good to be back, you know, standing around. It's like that one senior that just keeps coming back. Uh, just guy who just graduated. And I know that's not what it is, but that's what it really seems like to me, the way Drinkwitz is talking to him. Uh, very cool to see, though, to see Cody and Tyron back um, back in Columbia right after they, they probably had one of the, the biggest experiences of their football careers. Well, and they'll be back for the pro day, too. So that's their mm -hmm. they're preparing. Yep. So Coming yeah, up. good for uh, good for those two. Um I'm staying in the in the topic of Columbia. I'm going away from sports for a second because this was just a funny tweet I saw. Um, it, the, if you have lived in Columbia, and I'm sure a lot of people listening have or are aware of this, Columbia had the biggest issue in the city was that it didn't have roll carts for garbage. And it was like a, a big debacle. Uh, people, there was Facebook groups made for it and against it, believe it or not, even though like... I, coming in as an outsider i'm like roll carts seem like a very practical thing to me um there was a lot of debates they finally got them in columbia and i'm just happy for all the people there were tweets like this i think this says like something like this is like watching someone walk on the moon for the first time or something like that um and yeah just happy that columbia finally has the the roll carts that the debate can finally be uh put to rest for like I lived in apartments, so I never had to deal with not having a roll cart, but it was just so funny to hear how big of an issue it is. I know you two can kind of speak to that too, having been residents, but it just, I don't know. It just made me laugh. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah. I, I always heard whispers of the, of the roll cart debacle. Of course mm -hmm. we never, we were college kids. We didn't really have to deal with it, but um, I can't, I want also the tweet is funny. Like, cause it, it's right. like, it took longer to get that done than Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. And it's just footage of a garbage truck doing <laughs> picking up garbage picking up truck a roll things. Card. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't have much of an opinion on it because it didn't affect me. We didn't. I mean, we had friends on East Campus uh, and walking around there on trash days. It's, it's gross. gross. It's like New York City. It's it's like just trash in the street. Not all of it just gets picked up and. It was gross Ooh. that it, it, I don't even know why this was ever a debate. It was a it was a thing that was going on for four years. I remember I didn't even know they were called roll carts until I got there. They, they were just trash cans or trash bins. I never knew yeah. that this was ever going to be an issue. Um, very <laughs> cool to see that the claw goes because the ones in Houston, they don't use the claws. They have claws on them. They just have two guys standing <laughs> on the back. Like if you look on, this, on here and they jump off, they grab it, throw it in and then kind of just push it back to the curb. 
Uh, we need a telestrator to analyze the to analyze this garbage can. Yeah. Oh my god! If we can get a telestrator on here, Kenny will be Kenny will be rolling while he's sharing the screen. <laughs> he can draw stuff. Um, yeah, that 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 they have a they have the good they have the good claw garbage carts or garbage trucks. But yeah, congrats Columbia for having roll carts. I have one bonus best thing I learned that wasn't a Missouri related, but I wanted to do a to do the roll cards because it was just funny also like it, i got inspired because i woke up this morning and i realized it was garbage day where i live and i didn't take my garbage can out and i had to sprint down and and put it out to the curb before the garbage truck got there but i made it we were we we're glad anyway my bonus best thing i learned um wanted to shout out uh brandon quinn from the athletic he wrote a really good article this isn't mizzou related he wrote a really good article about um steven izzo tom izzo's son um, and this was sent to me and I read it. And I just highly encourage if you have an athletic subscription, please go read it. It's right there. It's about Stephen Izzo and how he was like adopted as a kid. I don't want to like spoil everything and, and just how he like kind of grew you up. Just spoiled a, a big I guess, part yeah. of the article. So. Well, there's there's good nuggets in there. But like, yeah, there could, I mean, that was just a fact. But I would highly encourage everyone to go read that. I, I figured I'd just share just because it was a, a nice thing to read in sports writing if you have an athletic subscription go check it out Braden did a, a very good job on that article i think did you guys read it i did it was very very yeah. good it's a worthwhile read uh in sports journalism and he hit like a a wild shot the other night against Rutgers. they taught that's like the lead of the story it's in so, the article yeah yeah so go read that it's a good article um yeah anything else joke payton Finish up yeah, the show. Kenny, if you could pull, uh, pull up a photo of someone on the Today Show. Uh, oh, okay, or we'll just... <laughs> okay, it was a great show, Jack. Uh, let's end it here. I this one I comes from our favorite TV this. series, the Today Show. Um, guys, did you hear about the fire at the shoe factory? Unfortunately, many souls were lost. Oh. It's kind of kind of dark. It's kind of dark. It's talking about shoe souls, not literal people. How could a shoe have a soul? It's an inanimate object. Yeah, I know. This you call the heel I don't know part why we, we still let him do this, Jack. He's going to get us canceled. I will always stand for Get him out of here. I found a keyboard by my desk. All right, we're ending the show. <laughs> uh, hope everyone enjoyed. Back we'll be back. May back? Hey May board? Um, we'll be back Friday. We'll have more visuals prepared now that we've unlocked this new element of the unwritten rule it's exciting times the basketball team might suck but our podcast sure as hell doesn't you should subscribe on youtube you should follow us on spotify apple Podcasts, wherever you get it thank you to bet online for sponsoring the show everyone have a fun and uh safe weekend go enjoy something else don't watch Mizzou on saturday don't watch it go do something else with your saturday night go to I trivia like kenny does yeah go do go do something fun until then we'll see you guys monday see ya.